All right, let's talk for a minute about the different lines that I've drawn on this phase diagram. On the top here, you have what's called the liquidus line, liquidus. And down here, you've got the solidus line, right? That's this one, that's this one. What's happening on those? Let's pick a temperature and a composition. Let's pick this temperature, this composition and that temperature, okay? Now, as we cool this thing down, all the way down to room temperature, the phase diagram tells us the composition of the solid and liquid at any given point in time. So when we first touch this line upon cooling it down, that is when, from a thermodynamic standpoint, the very first solid should appear. So what should be the composition of that solid? You could come all the way over here, draw a flat tie line, and where it intersects this line right there, that would be the composition of the solid that forms. So when it's cooling down, like its initial composition, C0, whatever this is over here, is mostly copper, but you see that the very first time that we start forming a solid, it's actually mostly nickel, right? It's on this side of the phase diagram. So we're going to form something that's mostly nickel, and the liquid is going to become uh, increasingly deficient in liquid as we move down, right? Because let's say we're at this point, this temperature. Now, the liquid and the solid compositions have changed. The liquid is over here. This would be the composition of the liquid, and this would be the composition of the solid. So the composition of these two phases are changing as you cool this down, assuming thermodynamic equilibrium, that you let this sit long enough, right? So as you continue cooling this down, they're going to change until you are now just below the solidus line and you're in a solid again. Now everything is at one composition again, and it's going to be the same as the composition that you started with. So that is the solidus and liquidus lines on these diagrams. Now, um, it's very common to see instances where uh, you have a non-perfect solid solubility. In this example, it's completely soluble all the way across. So again, let's go back to our picture of an atoms. Let's assume that copper and nickel have some sort of arrangement of atoms, right? Maybe that's copper, and maybe nickel looks like. So copper is a little bit larger than nickel, and so nickel, it might be over here. I'm going to exaggerate it, but maybe it looks like this, right? So if you were to draw what's called a unit cell, and we'll talk more about this later, you might say that that's the size of the unit cell, and that's the size of the unit cell. So it's larger, if we, drew, if we called that x in here, um, x is not the same number for both, it's, it gets smaller. So what you can often do is you can plot this so-called lattice parameter, this edge length of the unit cell, to see when you have a change in your phases that are present. So in this instance, what would it look like? For copper and nickel, if you plotted the lattice parameter, all right, so we'll call this x our lattice parameter, and you plotted it as a function of weight percent nickel. So again, pure nickel over here, pure copper over here. We just showed you that because it's a complete solid solubility, you'd expect to see a nice straight line all the way across, right? So you've got data points straight across. If you experimentally made this, this is what you'd expect to see. Okay? That's because there's no solubility limit. You can dissolve copper completely into nickel and vice versa. These things are completely soluble one in another. Okay? Now, let's go back to this scenario. What if there is a solubility limit, right? Let's say that nickel was not completely soluble in copper. How would this picture change? You'd see a linear trend, but it would reach a limit. So again, let's draw this. So we're plotting our lattice parameter, okay, versus the weight percent of component B in A. So there's whatever A and B are, whatever elements those are. You would see things like this. You'd have data points where they are linearly increasing until a point, and then they don't change anymore. So this is the region of solid solubility, and then this is the region where you must have a two-phase mixture because the lattice parameter, the size of this cell, isn't changing. So what do we mean by this? We're literally taking nickel and we're pulling out a copper atom. It's getting pulled out and we're replacing it with a smaller nickel atom. And so what that does is it creates a unit cell which is somewhere in between these. It's not as big as this one here and it's not as small as that one there. So it's changing the size of this so-called unit cell.